previously on Haunted. Greenvale has its very own serial killer. He was tall, dark hair, quite soft-spoken. Oh, you must mean Theo. Theo Harper. Well, he knows we're on to him if it's him. A boy went missing 30 years ago. Gus Temperman. His father disappeared not too long after. Seems his house was seized and given over to the Homeless Project. Or maybe we wander into a serial killer's den by ourselves with no police backup to speak of. You know who to be. Gus, is it you? Let's see what his last painting was. He looks kind of familiar. Is that the stone circle in the forest? Yeah, I think so. You go first. Are you... Go, I'll be right behind you. Does it match any of those Old Testament cults you mentioned? At a glance, the blood of Isaac. The photo of the portrait. It, it must have uploaded to the cloud. She knows who it is. Call her. I am. Haunted, the audio drama. Episode 2. A Soft Cry. Part 6 of 6. Written by Benton Hodges. Put her on speakerphone. I am! Hello? I'm here, Mum. What's wrong, darling? You sound panicked. The text you sent, Mum, about the portrait. Oh, the portrait was lovely. I saw it on... the sky thing? The cloud. We share accounts, Mum. I took the photo of that portrait, Mum. Oh, really? Who drew it? It's very detailed. Mum, who's Frasier? Frasier is a boy in my congregation. A bit younger than you, I think. Does he still attend regular mass? No, he stopped coming a week ago. Why? I can't say why. He said so in confession and I can't repeat it. Please, Mum, his life is in danger. No, the seal is absolute and I would be excommunicated. I'm sorry, Abs, I really am, but my hands are tied here. Oh, can you at least give me his address so I can go and speak to him or maybe his phone number? I'll have his phone number. Thank you, Mum. And if you're seeing anything suspicious, call the police and text me, please. OK. I promise. OK. OK, bye, Mum. I love you. The police have just left the Temperman house. But if Theo has already gone for Fraser, then... I'll call him now and tell him he has to get to the police station or, or somewhere safe at least. Right. I think there's answers to this mess at the stone circle in the forest. What? The stone circle with the symbols that Theo painted. I think they link into this more than we realise. You want to go there? Right now? What else am I supposed to do? The police are handling this. You go and get Fraser. I'll check the stones. All right, if you think it'll help. Trust me. Hello? Hello? Is this Fraser? Uh, yes. Who is this? My name is Abigail. My mother is Reverend Corbin. Cheryl. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I haven't been there for a while, but... It's... it's all right. You don't have to tell me why. My mum didn't tell me either. All she said was that you haven't been coming recently. Uh, yeah, it, it just didn't feel right anymore. OK, uh, have you been experiencing anything weird lately? Like what? Like noises, babies crying or, or, or seeing things. I've had trouble sleeping recently. OK, are you old enough to drive? No, I'm 15. OK, do you think one of your parents could drive you down to the police station? The police? Am I in trouble? I thought they... No, they... you're not in trouble with the police, and I don't want you to panic, but could you get your mum and dad to drive you to the station? They aren't really talking to me right now. Shit. Oh, OK, I'll drive down and get you. Where do you live? Uh, I don't know if I should. Please, Fraser, time is of the essence. OK, I'll, I'll text you my address. All right, I'll be there as soon as possible. You'll reimburse me for the phone bill, right? Aren't you on an unlimited plan, like the rest of the world? Never mind, stupid question. Just stay on the call with me. If he calls you, put me on hold and I'll start triangulating it. Remind me why you aren't here with me, protecting and serving and whatnot. Most of the police are raiding the Temperman house. The only ones left at the station are, well... I wouldn't trust them to open a tin can, let alone triangulate a serial killer. Seems fair. 
but I thought you'd be leading the raid. So did I. But the police is mostly politics, and the Gov and I aren't on the best terms. I have a feeling I might be linked to that. Just focus on the stones, mate. Got it. Finding the stone circle was no easy feat. It was nestled deep in Hangman's Woods, surrounded by thick brush that blocked it from view. It had been marked on tourists' maps with a brown symbol, but even with this aid it took a lot of guesswork. Unlike Stonehenge, this barely saw any foot traffic, and the town stayed away from it. Partly superstition, but also some aggressive animals had been known to nest nearby. Most of the forest looked the same, just one foreboding tree after the next. They rustled in the gentle wind, and for a moment I swore I could hear them speaking my name. By the time I reached it, the sun had begun to set, and once more I was in the forest at night. Why do I let myself do this? It's just a circle of stones. And there it was. Standing out against the starkness of the clearing was twelve large stones. The undergrowth seemed unwilling to expand closer to the circle, leaving the ground around it barren with dry leaves and twigs. The only shrubbery that grew near the stones was an odd, ivy-like vine littered with strange reddish flowers, with buds that looked almost like small organs. The stones they hung off were taller than me by at least three feet, and the tops rose like fingers, almost touching at the top. In the centre, on the barren ground, was a large slab of stone that during the day would reflect small beams of sunlight off it onto the neighbouring rocks. As I drew near to it, I could see the scrawling that had been carved upon the rocks with a chisel, it seemed, or other thin implement, strong enough to carve through stone. Dan, the painting was right. There are all sorts of symbols on it. All right. Be careful, man. The central slab, likely intended to be an altar when the formation was assembled millennia ago, had been stained a reddish-brown. While years of rain and weathering had rubbed most of it out, by looking closer I could still see small flecks of staining within the nooks and crannies of the rock. I traced my finger through the markings and carvings, trying to get a feel for the implement used and the state of mind he was in. His hand was steady, his purpose clear. Atonement. Punishment. Binding. That is what Harry had said these symbols meant. Did someone, perhaps Theo, truly believe that he was bringing something forth with these symbols? And if so, what had been upon the altar oh so long ago? A deer? A hare? Or something far more morbid? Dan, I'm getting a call. It's from an unknown number. This could be it. All right, just keep him on the line as long as possible. Hello? Mr. Hunter. Theo Harper, I presume. Correct. You must imagine my shock when I heard that the great James Hunter was out of retirement. Oh, no. Tell me you're not a fan who did all this to impress me. No, Mr. Hunter. To educate you. Pride is a sin I do not partake in. I'm pretty sure cold-blooded murder is a worse sin to commit. But not in wrath. It was the will of... Oh, save it. I'm not arguing with an evangelist. I might as well bash my head against a brick wall. You will see it from my perspective soon. As for your little sidekick, she should stop sticking her nose where it doesn't belong. Or she'll be the subject of your next ghost hunt. If you lay so much as one finger on her... Her fate is sealed, along with the turncoat she attempts to shield. Dan, have you got it? I should, but it's only pinging two towers. Yours and mine. Oh, unless... Unless what? His phone is on the same tower. He's there. You need to go... Hello, Mr. Hunt. Uh, uh, uh... James! James, I'm on my way. Just stay... Hello? Hi, I'm here to pick up Fraser. Is he ready? You are? Where are you going? Uh, the cinema. New superhero film. Really? Oh, right, he's been in his room the last few days. Uh, let me see if he's up and about. Fraser! Fraser! Sorry, dear, he must have his headphones on or something. Fraser! Coming! 
Well, you're leaving this lovely girl waiting. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Abigail. Lovely to meet you. I'm Cassandra. So, uh, how do you know my son? Uh, through school. Oh, well, it's exciting to finally meet you. Uh, can I get you a drink of anything, Abigail? I'm fine, thank you. Just in a bit of a hurry. Well, you picked the worst boyfriend then. I swear I'll be late to his own funeral. <laughs> Fraser! I swear if you don't hurry up! Right, let's go. Don't be out too late. Look, Mum. Never mind. Bye, Abigail. Lovely to finally meet you. Where the hell were you? You knew I was coming to pick you up. I'm sorry. I thought I saw something outside my window. And I kept hearing this weird... Look, it's fine. Though I may have told your mum we are going to see a movie together. Oh, shit. Yeah, sorry. But I thought it would be easier to explain than the police station. Yeah, she would have probably freaked out. Though she doesn't seem to mind that I look about ten years older than you. I think she's just happy to meet you. I hope you don't mind death metal. What? Whoa! Sorry, I'll turn that down. Can you please tell me why I'm in danger? Uh, do you really want to know? Yes, of course I want to know. Look, there have been some recent deaths in the local area. All of them seemed like unconnected heart attacks, but then there was one thread that linked them all. They'd all recently lost their faith. What? Yeah. All of them had recently stopped attending church and removed any crucifixes from their homes. But we have found who did it. The suspect is called Theo Harper. We believe he attended various church meetings to keep an eye on who attends and who doesn't. And what about me? Well, in this house we found three paintings, each of the victims, and an unfinished one. It was a view. But my mum managed to identify you and then here we are. So, a serial killer is trying to... Because I... Look, look, you don't have to tell me why you stopped believing in him unless you think it will help the case. But in a few minutes, police will be raiding Temperman's house where he's squatting. Plus, my partner is searching for any other clues that might help. And you'll be nice and secure at the station. That's a bit more comforting. I can't imagine how you must feel, but do you mind if I ask? Did you notice anyone weird at my mother's chapel? No. Could you describe him? I don't have any photos, but he had short dark hair and was quite tall. He may have had a scraggly beard and a wig and probably looked quite... Oh, fuck! I think I just cracked it! What? I know why there wasn't any food in this house. He was going to the homeless food drives. You know, with the soup and the bread. The ones hosted by the churches. Each church does one week on different days and there's plenty of churches in town. It's the perfect way of scouting it. It gives them a chance to meet people, eavesdrop and, and blend in. Do you ever do the food drives? Yes, once a week. And did you recently stop? Yeah. Oh, I've cracked it! I'm a bloody genius! Oh, sorry. Wait, aren't you in danger too? How so? Well, your mum is the Reverend, right? And I never see you at church. I never really embraced the whole thing, to be honest, but maybe that doesn't matter to him. But I was never at the food drive, and I haven't really been to Mass in years. I'm not worried. It's you we've got to keep safe. All right, station's up here. Why is Dan waving like a lunatic? Dan, what's happened? Abigail, we need to get to the stone circle now. What? I found the boy Theo is looking for. He's safe now. It was a trap, Abs. He wanted to separate you and get James alone. OK, Fraser, get in the station and don't leave the police officer's sight. OK, thank you, Abigail. Right, stone circle. Yeah, step on it. Was that a fire truck? It's headed toward the Temperman place. Oh, God. This is Officer Cowell. What is the status of the Temperman raid? Over. 1171. All places ablaze. Firefighters on route. He's preparing to run. We need to get to James now. What have you done? It's my special concoction. I don't usually inject it, or at such a dose, but I had to compensate for your tolerance. What's happening to me? Just lie back. Feel the stone beneath you. Feel the world revolve around you. See what you weren't meant to see. 
Despite being smaller than the more famous monoliths, I had to admit that the circle did give off a strange vibe. It felt powerful somehow. I stopped a few metres back, leaning against the trunk of a large tree. Suddenly I was overcome by a strange feeling. I felt short of breath and noticed that my body seemed to be covered in a sheen of sweat despite the cool wind blowing through the trees. Who was that? Hello? Hello? It can't be. I had found my way to a small clearing away from the circle. How far exactly, I could not say. There, turned on its side, was the wreckage of a car. But how? There were no roads leading this deep into the forest. How could the car have gotten here? Hey, hello? Is anybody hurt? Go! Get out now! I'm, I'm trapped, I can't move! Now, James, go now! No. No, 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 not this, not this. Clara! Clara, are you okay? Clara, wake up, please! No, no, don't run! Why? Why am I seeing this? No! No! What is wrong with me? Why am I seeing this again? James. Hello? James. Danger. Dad. Where are you? She's in danger. <laughs> Who is this? This can't be happening. Logic, rational thought. Come on, James, come on. Pull it together. Pull yourself together. James. Get out of my head. James? This way. What the hell is he doing? James! James, can you hear me? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. James, look at me. James! Abigail, what's that? What's that haze around you? James! James, stay with me! What's happening? He's going into cardiac arrest. Right, I'll perform CPR. Stand back. Oh, come on, breathe, you son of a bitch. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, come on, don't give up on me, man. Breathe! Just breathe, man! Come on! Dan, it's not working! I can see that! Wait! My EpiPen! What? My EpiPen! Oh, give it here! <gasps> Where? What? Where am I? Oh, thank God. James, you're all right. Wait, where's Theo? He's gone. Come on, let's get you back to the station. Saving your ass is favoured too, by the way. We are even. What are you looking at? Nothing. Wait, there's something. There's something there in that rabbit hole. Oh, God. No. Oh, it's, it's just a toy lion. What did they say? They said they were on their way to the station. Have the police said what will happen now? They want me to leave town, discreetly, and stay with my auntie in London. Hey, London isn't so bad. You've got the West End, great restaurants, and some of the best unis in the country. Yeah, I guess. It would be nice to get away from it all. Exactly. And you'll be safe, too. Is that the friend you mentioned? Over there? Paranormal expert James Hunter. He looks rough. <laughs> That's nothing new. Check the tag on the lion. It was a line of toys made back in the early 90s. And the dried blood on it. Impossible to determine whose, as it was so old. But it was human blood. It was surprisingly well preserved, though. Just like the pills in the treehouse. Yeah. Does it link to Theo? No. I don't know how it fits into all of this. But I think you can close the missing persons case on Gus Temperman. Oh. <sighs> I didn't think this world could get any more depraved. That's the parents. Oh, Fraser. Are you OK? I'm fine, Mum. Abigail made sure I was safe. Have they said what's happening? 
A serial killer had targeted me, Mum, for losing my faith. You're, you're not a... No, Mum. And the police want me to relocate to London till the killer is called. Well, how long will that take? They don't know. Oh, I can't bear the thought of you being in danger. And you'll be so far away from me. Oh, what do you care? You haven't talked to me all week. Fraser, I'm sorry. I, I was in shock. It's an adjustment and I just... You, you couldn't love me for who I was because some fucking 2,000-year-old book says I'm evil. Oh, Fraser, please. And now that I'm leaving, you suddenly want to talk to me again. It shouldn't take a serial killer trying to kill me to make my own mother love me again. I'll never stop loving you, dear, but... I'm sorry, Mum, but I think the time away is for the best. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> would you mind packing my things? The police said I shouldn't go home. I can help if you like. I think saving my life was more than enough help. Don't mention it. Dan, get back to you yet? No. They've had undercover cops all at the food drives but haven't turned anything up yet. Well, hopefully he'll slip up. They reckon he's fled or is hiding in the forest. They've got sniffer dogs looking for him and everything. Full manhunt. Good. The faster they catch him, the better. Exactly. I know we found a perfect suspect, but part of me can't help but feel there's more to this. Like what? Well, no one has heard of the blood of Isaac in years and there doesn't seem to be any link between them and Richard or Theo... And how did he know that people had lost their faith? They could have just stopped attending soup drives. What? Well, sure, he was scouting them, and maybe he overheard them, but of the four victims he chose, all of them had lost their faith. That's unbelievably accurate. He just knew, almost as if he had a sixth sense. You're reaching. And what about Gus? Abigail, drop it. Sure. Sorry. Dan's got the toxicology report, shall we? How are you feeling, James? It's fading to just a bad hangover now. Nothing here if the dog won't fix. What's the report say? It took some time. Had to be passed around from forensic experts, toxicologists and horticulture experts. But eventually we found it. It's a natural poison created from a very rare plant called Phenacea. From around here? Sort of. The plant used to make the poison was taken from the cuttings of the original. And the original was found in a place called Byzantigrad. Where? It's a remote peninsula in Eastern Europe. Europe's Bermuda Triangle. What? It has the highest density of missing travellers of anywhere else in Europe. So he took it from there? And cultivated it here. He was looking for very specific soil conditions. Apparently, the plant only grows in soil that's rich in minerals found in blood. They were known for growing in places after a massacre took place. Kind of like the poppies after World War I. Apparently, the flower is intrinsically linked to the occult through this... So those flowers I saw at the Stone Circle? Were Phenacea. They don't travel well and lose their potency quick, so it must be why he set up shop nearby. When properly cultivated and turned into poison, it puts heavy stress on the portions of the brain that are linked to emotion and memory, while also putting strain on the optical nerves and eyes. This in turn puts enormous amounts of stress on the heart, causing the heart attack. This brain swelling also caused the blood in the ear. And the hallucinations. Uh, not quite. Well, tell them to check again. I was seeing all sorts of strange shit that wasn't there. Trust me, I asked. They gave me this. This image is a scan of a brain under LSD. See these parts? That's what causes visual and auditory hallucinations. And this... This is a report on Sandra and David's brain. You see the issue? They weren't hallucinations. I... I don't know, mate. These victims took the drug through the skin. You were injected. Maybe you experienced different side effects because of it. See what you're not meant to see. Are you all right, James? I need a drink. Well, yeah, we can do that easily, but unless you're planning on going back in time to 2012, I suggest not bothering. Facebook's dead now, as far as the younger generation's concerned. Excuse me, are you Scott Hartigan? I want to call, mate. What? No, no, no. Forget Twitter. It's a cesspool. Everyone's just yelling in their own personal own echo chambers. TikTok's where it's at. Hey, that was a very important business call. Oh, was it? Worth 60k a year plus benefits. Well, this job is a matter of life or death. Sorry, ma'am, but I don't sit down until I hear them numbers. People are going to die. Not my problem. You are a detestable human being, aren't you? It's a gift. Are you as good as they say you are? 
with computers and tracking down information. With the right price, I can find anything, legal or not. I need a complete list of every person who has worked for Derringer Audio Manufacturers for the last five years, including any outside consultants they brought in. This is part of an investigation I'm doing, and it could lead down a lot of rabbit holes. I need you to be prepared for that. What, are you a cop? It doesn't matter who I am. I'm just somebody who's trying to help people. I'm completely useless with technology, though. That's very noble of you. But this sounds a lot like work. Several weeks worth of work. How much are you offering for that? I can give you £200,000. And now I'm interested. This money isn't stolen, is it? No. I don't have anything to my name except a crappy flat. Thanks to the ludicrously inflated housing market, even that damp and rat-infested hellhole is worth 200000 easily. Let me get this straight. You're selling your home and paying all the proceeds to me, despite you having nothing yourself? Yes. Why would you do something like that? I told you, it's a matter of life and death. Oh. Pleasure to be in business with you. Mr. Harper? <laughs> oh, it's you. He's chosen you, Mr. Harper. He's very pleased with your work. I live to serve. He's grown tired of his current vessel and has chosen you. Me? I'm honoured. Pack your things. We leave for Byzantigrad at once. Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter and Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin. With special guest Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Tess Gustard, Jack Byrne, Madeline Carter, Charles Topping, Sharon Williams, Tom McCarthy, Benton Hodges. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Charles Topping and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next terrifying chapter of Haunted, the audio drama. Hi guys and gals, this is Jamie Evans, creator and half of the showrunning team for Haunted, the audio drama. I also play James Hunter in the show. We really hope you're enjoying the show and that you're feeling intrigued by the mysteries we're trying to set up. I don't want to take up much of your time. I'm sure you hear something similar to this at the end of every podcast or audio drama that you listen to. This is the part of the show where we beg you for your hard-earned money. We chose to release Haunted free of charge because we wanted as many people to hear it as possible. We have no plans to ever change that model, so please don't worry, the show will continue to release for free for the foreseeable future. However, it does cost us quite a lot of money to produce Haunted. Things like marketing budget, studio rental equipment costs, and of course paying for our performers makes the show very expensive to produce. So we've decided to set up a Patreon, where fans of the show can donate a small amount of money to us each month if you choose to do so. We have two different donation tiers on our Patreon, and these come with rewards including access to our Discord server, early access to episodes, and access to a behind-the-scenes show where we talk about the process of making Haunted and the sorts of things that inspired the show. That literally doubles the amount of Haunted content that you will be receiving. If you could please consider donating so that we can continue the story of James and Abigail, we would be so grateful. Find us at patreon.com slash impalafilms. That's impala spelled I-M-P-A-L-A. 
patreon.com slash impala films thank you so much and see you next time